Welcome. This is question 21 in my ongoing series of global warming general knowledge quiz questions. True or false? Bill Gates is proposing to kill 1.3 billion people to save the planet from global warming. Well, we see it all over the internet, and even some of the mainstream media have discussed the story based on Gates' remarks at the recent TED 2010 conference. So the eugenics movement seems to have a new supporter. The 30 minute lecture given by Gates has been run thousands of times on the internet with him saying all these dreadful things in his own words. Because we are all basically morons with the comprehension of the English language slightly below that of a kitchen mop, we will need the services of one of our many truth revealing radio talk show hosts, Jason Burmas, to translate Bill's carefully coded words lest we miss the diabolical plot buried amongst all that evil science and maths. Here's Jason. All right, let's go right to Bill Gates propagating the same ideals, the same information over at TED 2010. Here's the equation. People are the problem. Reducing our CO2 to zero somehow, even though he admits, you know, we produce something like five to 20 tons of CO2 each year. How are we going to get that down to zero? Bill Gates is here to tell us. Hit the clip. We need to meet a new constraint. And that constraint has to do with CO2. CO2 is warming the planet. And the equation on CO2 is actually a, a very straightforward one. If you sum up the CO2 that gets emitted, that leads to a temperature increase. And that temperature increase leads to some very negative effects. Let's stop it. He puts up CO2, temperature increase, negative effects. Let's start with CO2. There is no evidence that CO2, the life force of plants here on Earth, which we deal with every day in our human lives, causes any kind of temperature increase and then negative effects. So he starts with a false premise. Well, he certainly does. You caught Bill out on that one, Jason. It is a false premise, especially if you discount the rising global temperatures, the increasing strength of hurricanes, loss of ice in the polar regions, rising sea levels, more extreme weather conditions, and an increase in ocean acidity, to mention but a few. I just don't know how Gates gets away with saying such things, especially as every professional scientific organization in the United States now endorses the anthropogenic global warming theory, even the Society of Petroleum Engineers. Wait till you see the next equation where people are the problem. Effects on the weather, um, perhaps worse, the indirect effects in that uh, the natural ecosystems can't adjust to these rapid changes and so you get ecosystem collapses. Now the exact amount of how you map from a, a certain increase in of CO2 to what temperature will be and where the positive feedbacks are, there's some uncertainty there, but not very much. And there's certainly uncertainty about how bad those effects will be, but they will be extremely bad. Stop it right there. There is uncertainty about how bad these effects will be, but there will certainly be very bad. So they have no idea what the effects might be because they haven't happened yet and we haven't had global warming for the past 13 years. That is Bill Jones, Mr. Global Warming. Okay? Bill Jones, Mr. Global Warming, Mr. I thought I was going to kill myself after those emails leaked. Admit it. No climate change, no temperature increase for the last 13 years. Excuse me, Jason but I think you got it slightly wrong. Actually, completely wrong. This is what Jones actually said, and this is a direct quote. I also calculated the trend from the period of 1995 to 2009. This trend, 0 0.12 degrees centigrade per decade, is positive, but not significant at the 95% level. The positive trend is quite close to the significance level. Achieving statistical significance in scientific terms is much more likely for longer periods and much less likely for shorter periods. If you want to read the interview for yourself, the link is posted at the bottom of this page. I also showed in my video, check quiz 1, questions 2 and 3, that I recalculated the trend using the data up to 2011. 
and the significance level is now well above 95% level and with a trend of about 0.15 degrees centigrade per decade. Very similar to what has been going on for the last 30 years. Sorry, I interrupted your rant. Please go on. And then he gets up here and admits they're uncertain of the effects of the climate change that isn't happening, but it's going to be very bad. Oh, it's going to be so bad. Flip. Now, we put out a lot of carbon dioxide every year, uh, over 26 billion tons. Uh, for each American, it's about 20 tons. Uh, for people in poor countries, it's less than one ton. It's an average about five tons for everyone on the planet. And somehow we have to make changes that will bring that down to zero. It's been constantly going up. It's only various economic changes that have even... Let me just stop it right there. They have a graph here of CO2 increase from 1855 to 2009. And apparently before 1855, CO2 just didn't exist. Somehow plants were breathing something else. What kind of jackassery, what kind of moron would buy into this? Oh, this is the guy that brought us the Windows operating system. We have to bow down. This is the guy that brought us the Xbox 360. He's getting my nipples hard. I love him so much. Meanwhile, we've got a graph saying there's no CO2 before 1855. Thank you, Bill Gates. I wonder what sort of jackass or moron can't be bothered to read the title of the graph. The graph is not of the total amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in 1855, but of the human carbon emissions from energy production. In 1855, a lot less people, no electricity, no cars, no oil. Hello, Jason. Anybody home? Perhaps before foaming at the mouth, if you looked at the numbers, you'd see that today we emit 8 trillion tons of carbon each year. Back in 1855, it was a tenth of 1% of that level. It took me nearly 30 seconds to find that number on the web. So he got all that completely wrong too. But he's not done yet. In fact, he's hardly begun in his cavalcade of errors. Moving on. Let's continue. So we have to go from rapidly rising to falling and falling all the way to zero. This equation has four factors, a little bit of multiplication. So you've got a thing on the left, CO2, that you want to get to zero. And that's going to be based on the number of people, Stop. the services. There it is. CO2 equals people. People. So you can't get to zero CO2 if you have people on the earth. Going to be awfully tough to get to that zero marker, Bill, while you're breathing, buddy. So again, CO2 equals people, and then he's going to tell you services per person, then energy, and carbon dioxide. Hit the clip. Each person's using, on average, the energy on average for each service, and the CO2 being put out uh, per unit of energy. So let's look at each one of these and see how we can get this down to zero. Uh, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Stop uh, it right there. Do you understand what he just said? One of these numbers is going to have to get to zero. Well, since people are the ones using the energy, it seems like the people are going to be the, the ones going down to zero. Apparently Jason did not do well in high school math. And I suspect he failed logic class too. Probably in his first or second year, he should have learned that any finite number times zero equals zero. So, as Bill Gates says, if any one of these factors becomes zero, we get down to the overall use of carbon to be zero. So then P, the number of people, can become zero. That's the mass extinction solution. Or the surfaces can become zero. That's the return to the cave solution. Energy used for each service can become zero. That actually breaks the laws of thermodynamics. But we could save quite a bit of energy uh, if we became more efficient probably a factor of two or three. Or well, the amount of carbon used to produce that energy could become zero. That is called the clean energy solution. And if you listen to the rest of Gates' speech, that's exactly what he says. I wonder why Jason or any of his other talk show host friends don't mention that. Let's move on. Then he reveals himself in the next 90 seconds 
that somehow vaccinations and health care and education are going to reduce the population. Health care and quote unquote vaccinations that are supposed to be good should extend your life. Shouldn't they, Bill? Hit the clip. Back from high school algebra. But let's let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. And it's funny the that these people. Has no, Jason, they're not laughing at the people, but at Gates's joke that someone could not understand that multiplying by zero gives you zero. Yes, the very thing that you could not understand. 6.8 billion people, that's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. But there Stop we it right there. I want you to bring it back to where it was before. Did you hear that, people? Now, I wonder why they stopped the video at that point. Perhaps it is because Gates goes on to say the following, which is not often shown by these talk show hosts. And when it is, it's deliberately misinterpreted. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. But there we see an increase of uh, about 1.3. You'll note he says increase of 1.3, meaning an increase in population of 1.3 billion. Many of these people claim that he actually meant decrease, but the math does not work out, so let me show you. The current population is 6.8 billion, and he says that will eventually become 9 billion. However, when people become more educated and have access to good medical services and birth control, they produce less children. The birth rate goes down as it has in all Western countries. Gates argues that we could reduce that 9 billion by 10% or more by cutting the birth rate. Assuming 10%, that makes the overall population 8.1 billion. 8.1 billion minus 6.8 billion is an increase of 1.3 billion. Quadrat demonstrandum. It would be astounding if Bill had got his arithmetic wrong, unless of course he used Excel. After all, the one thing he is really good at is counting up his billions. Later on, Gates shows this slide with the trend arrows on them. Note above the P, the arrow is up. So he is talking about an increase in population. Sorry, eugenicists, Gates is not actually in your camp after all. Now, Burmus is not the only one trying to milk this story for all it's worth. He's not even the worst one. But when you hear claims that the global warming alarm is run by the eugenicist movement, you know now that the speaker is plain lying to you. And if they have to resort to such tactics, it means that they have no case whatsoever. That's it. Keep safe. Bye for now.